Morning. Saturday morning, very warm again. A cup of tea. I've just done this quick sketch of uh, a design of a, a river. A couple of buildings here. These will be in paint rather than ink. But, uh, but they're there. I might put a bit of ink work on there. Uh, we're going to decide on, on the, the, the light. If the light comes from that way, from up here, then that will be dark there and that side will be in shadow. Uh, so, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see how we go. Um, right, I've got my, this is Fabriano 130 pounds. It's just a little bit smooth for this sort of work. The, 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 there aren't so many high spots on the paper to really dry brush. So that's why we tend to end up with blobs. Let's clean off some of this uh, graphite. I do the, I do the, the, my sketching, or what such as it is, with a graphite pencil, solid graphite, artist loft, very, very good, last river, and very good for this sort of work. I keep pointing with a bit of sandpaper, and the sharpen as I go. Right, got a lid with some water in it and a bit of the black acrylic paint, and they've already splashed, look. So I will. So let's go in with uh, the tree here. I know you like these line and wash there. I, I did used to do them with um, a, a stick, but it's easier with a with a brush. So let's, let's get this up here. Another one coming up here. I'm putting this one nearer to me to put this, the, the uh, house in, in its perspective. Do you want to get on my shoes? Just have fun with the brush. Don't try to be clever and put everything in and it all perfect. Just keep it very sketchy. I was talking to a friend, I was having my bike the day, getting the papers and some eggs and bits and pieces. And he's been copying Degas pastel, which is just as a hobby really. No aspirations to be a, be a great artist. But uh, We were talking about fakes and things. We spent an hour on the side of the road. I was still sitting on my uncomfortable saddle on my bike. I always go on my bike. I love my bike. And uh, we were talking about Vermeer, the great. Now, as far as I know, there are only about 38 known works, plus a few, quite a few fakes. And one of the great fakers of Vermeer was uh, Van Meegeren, and there's a book about him. And also, there's a film, it's on YouTube at the moment, I'm going to watch it when I get time, it's over an hour long. It's called Tim's, Tim's Vermeer, Tim's Vermeer. And it's about a guy that showed that Vermeer used uh, some sort of lens, a mirror arrangement on his interior paintings. I remember David Hockney doing a television uh, documentary on, on on the use of the cam camera obscura, and I think it was so sort of invented in the 16th century. And uh, and he uh, showed that up until about a certain time in the 16th century, 15th, 16th century, I'm sure. Um, and perspective was very naive. If you look at figures on old paintings, they sort of it was looking ahead, but looking down. So the figures were above figures, but smaller as they went into the distance. They didn't understand vanishing points, and he showed that all of a sudden, in that century, 
the uh, artist went from naive painting to very, very highly detailed, decorative chandeliers, armour. Uh, absolutely perfect. It was quite uh, staggering. And he showed that, or proved that they were using a camera obscura and painting around the edges. And they could see the perspective exactly. And how he proved that was to say that all these swordsmen seem to be left-handed. Well, most people are right-handed. So he said that they were working from a reversed image. So I thought that was pretty good. Let's just put some of that down there. So a little bit of reflection there. Let me do some here. Okay. <coughs> so we're going to put a, a tree over here now. And another one coming up from here. All sort of gnarled, like my the one I did yesterday. Looks rather mysterious. A bit spooky, creepy even. But that's how it came out. I had no idea of of it being anything other than what it was. These things just make themselves up as they, as they go along. I follow the brush rather than brush what I'm thinking. If you find things happening. But once it's done, the, once the black's on and it's dry, that's it. There's not much you can do about it, so let's get all this old, gnarled, I might even put some uh, ivy stuff on it, creepers. Any blobs, just drag a brush over it. But keep it all rough. Rough, 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 rough. Ooh. I'll put the heel of the brush in the white of the paint. I get some thicky. Right, that'll do. Let's see if we can just get some of that in. We can put some mauve behind there. Oh, look at that. Would you believe it? So we turn that into a bit of heavier stuff here. Right, that, that'll do it. That's a go too mad. Put this one right up into the top of the picture. Done it again. Clean out. The painting of these, once the drawing's done, doesn't take very long. It's 
try and get a more pleasant shape here. Right, that's about all the, or well, maybe we can just put a little bit of drawing on this uh, chimney stack here. Let's keep it rough. Right, that'll do. No more than that. I'll give it a dry and then I'll loosen up my paint. Oh, we'll crack on. Have a swig of tea. I can fill in here with the brush now with the, with the paint. So, paints, they're Cotman 21mm tubes. Lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, and burnt sienna. You can buy, I buy all my stuff online now, it's much cheaper than going to a, sadly for the art shop, unless I've got an online business. We've been paying their prices for too long, and now they're exposed to a lot of competition from online shopping. So, there we are. Uh, right, uh, I'll wet the, well I will when I, I, I forgot to clean the tip of my brush or something. Just the gum arrow because has, uh, gum works up at the moment, that will come out. This is all water soluble. Well I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave that to soak a little bit, it's got a little bit harder than I'd hoped. Bear with me, I've got another hake here. I've got another new no, I won't use a new one, I'll use my old, my old one with a short handle. But before I do, I just wanted to put a little bit of detail in there. Just a touch with this uh, inch brush. Oh, it's just lovely reeds, grasses. It's all Derek Tookie-ish really. Have a look at him, he's a wonderful painter. The English tradition. Right, that it, that it. Let's just dry that. Right, okay, so we'll give, all oh, right, I'm not thinking, uh, dry the paint, the paper, because otherwise the wet will spread it all over the place. So take your headphones off or fast forward through this bit. Well, I think you'll agree that's that's a very simple scene. So just a bit of a, a wet. Turn it to soak it. You will find that the paper will expand, but then just reclip it. You don't need to stretch this paper first. See, that's that's lifted a little bit of that. It wasn't bone dry. <coughs> but by the time I put all the washes on. That all disappears. So a bit of sienna to warm this up. This is sort of based on a, a river, the Great Stir down in Kent, near Canterbury. Lovely, lovely Kent. Put the water in. Okay. I 
I don't want a complicated sky because there's enough in the in the drawing so we don't really want to compete with that so let's just put in a bit of a bit of that go a little bit darker when you're looking down at your feet you're looking at the not at that bit of the sky but you're looking into the depth of the sky above so paint that bit of a reflection in there with dark I'll do green go darker than that okay that will do Right, put a bit of the background in now. So I'll use a bit, a bit of a bit of alizarin. and a bit of alizarin, but you don't want it sloppy. You want it to. It's a bit, bit of a bit of sienna, burnt sienna. Bit of burnt amber. Well, plenty of colour in this to to um, to to reduce the intensity of the black so I'm just got a bit a lot of detail going in here but I can do that as it dries off all right let's put in a bit of this So down to the horizon, there. Yeah. All right, let's just get a little bit of green in here. Okay, so this is our, we're leaving that blank at the moment, we'll leave that to dry. So we want some nice grassy stuff in here, green. So this film I'm talking about, the uh, Tim's Vermeer, that's on YouTube, the, 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 all the versions of it from various sources so I'm going to have a look at that later on while I'm listening to oh no not when I'm listening to Crystal Palace on the radio right we've got much more strength in there but I want to just get this little bit of reflection in 
Nee. I'm not using my main easel, I'm using this herring easel, which is very nice, but I don't seem to have anywhere to put anything. Okay, that'll do for that. Just do this bit here. So that's catching the light, so we'll put a nice bit of, bit of yellow in there. Right, I want to put some warmer colours in that foliage now, so a bit of, bit of paint's grey, mixed with the burnt umber and burnt sienna, so let's just, ooh, that's not dark enough. Right now we're going to mix up a really dark green. Now I'm not sure the lemon yellow is really a great colour to use. But I want it to go in here. This would be the one green bit about this tree. Spooky. No, it's not bad, is it? So maybe I spoke in haste. Right, now I'm going to put in the, uh, the sides of the, this building. I'm going to use a bit burnt umber. So that's catching the light, we agreed. Uh, and then we've got a slate roof, but we don't want it too cold. So we're going to be brown in it. A bit of dark on there. A bit of dark on there. And then a darker shadow beside on there. Uh, 
and that gable there. And then a bit of grey. Then we'll get onto some uh, Right, that, that will do for that, I think. Let's uh, uh, find the rigger. And we'll put in some blue and blue and red, I think. Light red, that is. Haven't used much of that on this painting. Oh. Don't want any uh, detail in that because it'll compete with the other stuff, and I don't want that to happen. We can put this in. Right, I don't think I'm going to do any more to that. Is that sign it? Sign it. Put it in a mount. Uh, maybe I can just a bit of dry. I'll use, I'll use this brush here, a bit of dry brush across here just to, just to ripple. Uh. Just got my hate back now. Look. All nice and clean. Now, just when I just lift it up, right mount. Uh, still haven't finished my tea, but if the tea is cold, it's because I've taken too long doing it. And I've reached the milestone over, overnight, over 10,000. It's taken, what, three years ago, January 13, 2013? Oh, there we are. So for Saturday morning, I've probably done enough water colours for one week. Right, uh, okay, so we call that uh, Stair, the Great Stir, Kent. These don't exist, by the way. It's just a, just a memory of being on top of a bus looking at this river and um, just abstracting it, really. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, I'll just bring you around so you can get a better, better look at it. See you next week. Bye-bye.